I am recording, I think, but I've got an error message saying SD card writing speed slow. Right, let me, uh... Eggplant, no. Not eggplant, aubergine and courgette. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, no, I did the spinny thing, didn't I? I go left, I go left. <laughs> Hello, campers. How we did, Lynn? Right, uh, Ratatouille. I'm making Ratatouille. I'm not making the Ratatouille that the rat makes in the film, Ratatouille, because all that slicing vegetables really thin and then layering it all in a perfect sort of circle or whatever he does with it is a pain in the bollocks. And also, I think technically that's not Ratatouille. That's called, a, it's got a different name. That's like Confit, boo, 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 or whatever. This isn't a quick one. It's... A, Relatively hands-off, it's chop a load of stuff, put it in a pot, cook it for an hour, chop a load of other stuff, stick it in that same pot, and then cook that for another hour. Got a nice big pot, heavy, casserole cast iron, jobby, on the hob, preheating. I've got two shallots, you can use a, an onion, a decent sized onion, a carrot, a stick of celery, big clove of garlic, two normal sized clove of garlic, fine and a chilli, I might only use half of this actually to be fair, uh, just chop it all. Okay, if you're still watching, everything's chopped in the pot which is on a medium, medium low. A couple of tablespoons of good quality extra virgin olive oil and in with our kind of mirepoix. We're not looking to fry the bejesus out of this. I'm just trying to sweat it down, but there is a lot of moisture in there currently that we want to get out of there. And I need a stirring implement. Where's my spoon? Right, give it all a mix. Let me get some light in the situation. Give it all a stir up just so that it's evenly distributed in the bottom of the pot, but just leave that for a bit. But we are gonna actually hit it with a decent pinch of salt, just to help bring out some of that moisture. Right, now that's cooked off, sweated down, fried out for a little bit. Got a jar, that size jar, of roasted red peppers and olive oil. Add all of that in there and stir them in. And we're going to add a tin of good quality tin tomatoes, chopped. The tin of tomatoes, half of it filled up with water, just to add a bit of fluid in there. And I'm going to add in about a tablespoon of tomato puree. Some a couple of cracks are decent. A couple of decent cracks of fresh black pepper. Because of all that tomato that's just gone in there, I'm gonna give it a decent, another decent pinch of salt. Uh, herbs de Provence. I'm gonna go in there with about a teaspoon of herbs de Provence. Uh, I've also got some fresh basil and some fresh parsley here. Whole, I'm just gonna chuck that in as well. Stir it all about. Right now, everything's in there, stirred up, mixed in. We're gonna whack a lid on it, cook it for about an hour. Let it simmer away. It's gonna end up being quite a thick tomato sauce, but we're gonna cook a load of other vegetables in it that are gonna release moisture into it. They're gonna thin it out to a right, round about the right area. So now we're gonna leave that for an hour, but what we're gonna do in the meantime, we're gonna get ready. I have here got my aubergine and my courgette. Now obviously in the film, Ratatouille, he thinly slices them all into perfect little discs. We're not gonna do that. We are gonna do this the same way Jacques Pepin does it, and he's the Frenchest man I know, and he's one of the best cooks I've ever known. Then we're gonna do it that way. So we're gonna quarter them, and we're gonna chop them just into little quarters. And here I've got a colander in a bowl, and I'm gonna put them into that colander. If you want to do the, the fancy on a mandolin, slice them all to the perfect rounds, you, you can do that. It's completely aesthetic in this dish, the size and shape of the vegetables. So that's a courgette, and this is gonna be a aubergine. Same thing. Quarters and quarters. 
Right, I'm gonna give them a decent sprinkle of salt and we're gonna just leave them there. We're doing that because aubergine especially, but courgette to a little extent as well, can get a little bit bitter when it's cooked. If you salt it and leave it, the moisture that makes it go bitter gets drawn out. So that this the colander in the bowl will mean that it won't just sit in that. Uh, will mean it won't just sit in those juices, those fluids, liquids. We can leave that for an hour. Leave that for an hour. I'll be back and I'll see you in an hour. Right, about an hour later, your kitchen should smell lovely. Wash the lid off, and you should be welcomed by this with some spoon. Give it a stir. It should be an absolutely banging tomato sauce for pasta, for pizza, for chicken parmigiana, for bloody anything you would ever want a tomato sauce for. And if you whack an immersion blender through it, it will zhuzh it all up and you'll get like a, a thick pulpy sort of sauce. We're not going to do that because we're going rustic and whatnot. There should be some moisture, not a lot, but there is some moisture come off of your eggplant. No. Not eggplant, aubergine and courgette. Right, get your least favourite tea towel. This is all stained from making hash browns, wringing out potatoes. I'm gonna put aubergines and courgettes on there. Oh, try not to drop it all over the floor. Spread it out, get your other bad quality tea towel. Put it on top and just pat it all dry. Right, in your pan that is quite hot, because we are trying to fry here. We're gonna go in with some more olive oil. Uh, while that's heating up, We've got two onions. I like red, they can be any color you want. So half that, I'm gonna half that, and then I'm gonna half that. Now, then go in the pan, gonna brown these a little bit as well. Since I mentioned Jacques Papin earlier, all I can keep saying to myself in my head is, hi, I'm Jacques Papin and I'm cooking at home. It's like a nice warm fuzzy blanket. If you haven't checked out Jacques Papin, is proper no shits given old school French chef. And he's not a French chef in the fucking way Gordon Ramsay says he's a French chef. He's an actual Frenchman who cooks. Right, so that's all in there. Just trying to pick up a bit of colour and we're gonna go in there with all of this as well. Like I said, this is just add an extra flavour. There's no, you don't have to do it. That can all just go straight in there. So now we've got a bit of color on that. We're gonna go from the pan into the pan. Try not to throw it everywhere. Right, and in there with all of that, we are gonna chuck in two big oh, beef steak tomatoes. And they are called beef steak tomatoes. Any good quality tomatoes. I'm gonna chunk them up, leave them quite large. A uh, handful of cherry tomatoes would be quite nice, that'd work. Uh, give that all a stirry stir stir. Let's get amongst it. Right, you see that sauce is now kind of thick and it's kind of barely coating everything. Kind of what you want. But all of these veggies, especially those tomatoes, are going to cook down and they're going to release a load of juice. And we're going to end up with a nice stewy vegetable consistency. So now what we're going to do, we're going to add another probably about a teaspoon of Herb de Provence. Give it another little pinch of salt, not too much, because those uh, aubergines and courgettes were very well seasoned, and we've already put quite a bit of salt in. A bit more black pepper. You know, stir all that in, stir all that through, and we are gonna whack the lid on. We're gonna whack the lid on, cook it with the lid on for an hour. But what you wanna do in about half hour to 40 minutes time, come back and preheat your oven. Because after an hour of cooking in the hob, we're gonna take the lid off and stick it in a 160 degree oven. Come back, get your oven preheating for when we come back in an hour's time. So, like I said, your oven should now be preheated to 160, 170. I mean, 180 doesn't be all right. We're gonna take the lid off. Nor all the baking trays as well to take them out of the oven. And we're gonna stick the bad boy in the oven, just in case, you know, you needed a visual representation of how to put stuff in the oven. And we're gonna leave that in there for about another 20 minutes to half an hour. I mean, it's cooked. You can eat it now. But if you stick it in the oven, it reduces it down and it caramelizes it all a little bit and it just makes it nicer. So back in about half an hour. Have a look, keep an eye on it, make sure it's not burning, not drying out too much, but yeah, BRB. Welcome back. Get out of the way of the steam. Look at this beauty. Oh, 
So, about another half hour. I had a bushes at it after 20 minutes and I thought, yeah, that can go a little bit longer. Look at all this lovely caramelization that we've had on top. Bloody beautiful. Get a spoon, get a bowl, stick the ratatouille in the bowl. Bosh. Now I've got a little bit of basil here that I didn't put in there that I'm gonna just lightly roll up and chiffonade. You may notice that isn't a chiffonade, don't sue me. Bosh that on top. And that is not bloody bad, if I say so myself. Oh, give it a little juju of olive oil on top just to set it up. Bosh. Bob's your auntie. Now, you can have it on a, as a side, you can have it on your own. Have it with a nice bit of crusty bread, beautiful. But any which way you want to eat it, it's going to blow your bloody socks off. And yes, it might not look all fancy with the slices and laid up and a little, but I ain't a Michelin star restaurant. I'm in a kitchen in East London. I like it a bit rustic, I like it a bit simple, and this, judge it by its flavour. A bit more than its looks. But yeah, that bush, bosh, bush, bush, bosh, salted, absolutely beautiful. Whack a chicken breast on top if you want. A bit of salmon will go quite nice with it. Poach a bit of salmon, stick that in there, on there. Side of steak, or like I said, I'm gonna have it on its own for lunch with a bit of bread. Can't go wrong. Right, and look at it, loads of the stuff. It probably cost me, oh, I'd be surprised that it cost me more than a fiver, and I could probably feed four people out of that. And me and someone else, because I'm a fat bastard, but you know what I mean. Anyway, champions, I will see you when I see you. Have good, have good, have a good one. See you when I see ya. Like, comment, and subscribe, all that jazz. I mean, no one's subscribed. I think I've got seven, still got seven subscribers, but yeah. All right then, be good, can't be good? Be lucky, and I'll see you when I see you.